one. Hello, Hello you guys. guys, and welcome to the Women's Cave. Cave, cave, cave. And that's really? so not done right. I, it's cave, cave. It's, it's supposed to be right. like cave, 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 cave. Dude, this is the one, this is the show right before the European trip. If I, if, hmm, shoot. I'm, I'm glad I'm like, I showed up. I'm happy that I even remember my name. Like, what's, what's my name? Oh, yeah, Jay. Let me introduce myself. Woo, I segue. I segue. Oh, what? Just give me a little dance time. What? Okay. <laughs> and I'm Wilnona. Oh, and I introduced my own self. I'm getting independent in things in my old age. I guess, I guess um, we should be like 20. Yeah, I'll forget it. I'm not even gonna try. Anyway, Jay, tell them about something that we do. I thought we were supposed to do banter. We were supposed to do banter. Oh my goodness, she always forgets. Like, no, well, not always forgets. Let's just say that we have forgotten today. I don't. I'm telling you, by the time we pull out our passports and board the plane, we're just gonna be like knocked out sleep. So I feel bad for the people sitting next to Jewel. That's all yeah. I'm gonna say. Jewel. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Whoever's sitting next to me. I'm not even that tall, but I'm probably going to take your leg with too. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Let yep. me just be honest. It's an eight-hour flight, and I'm happy for it. Anyway, if you guys want to know about all that loveliness of what's Check going on. Check out Just Writing Life, episode three. And maybe episode On Amazon.com. Right, on Amazon.com. Oh, oh, you can also watch us on Channel 18 on Sacram and Sacramento Television. I so we that. are the And I Thought Ladies. Co-authors, co-founders, co-everything with 11 other wonderful, beautiful, gorgeous ladies. Actually, 12. I'm sorry because the new book, we added some. So 12 other yeah, wonderful, gorgeous. It's not quite out yet. But hey, you guys, remember that long awaited book that we were promising and I thought he was the one? It will be out real soon. What? Friday. High five. Be out by Friday. It's not going to be out by Friday. It needs to be edited. She's weird. <laughs> anyway, we wrote these books, and I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons, and I thought being grown up was easy, and I thought I could juggle it all out, out of stock, stock, and I thought I did my journey alone. Out of stock. Hey. Woohoo. Thank you guys for buying. And I thought um, I had it all figured out. A fiction, episode one. So, Hollywood, if you're out there, yeah, well, no one would like you to pick up the script book and read it. Just say it. This it's is a my book pilot though. episode. Pilot episode. Just okay. have the actor say the words. Everything available on Amazon.com, BuzzNobles.com, and AndWeThought.com. You guys, take a moment when you go to AndWeThought.com. Go to the ladies' page. Go all the way at the bottom. See the charities that we proudly support. Or, like, what you guys support. That's it. Even better. And we have the CD and all these wonderful things. Fortune of the proceeds that when you buy our books and stuff, go to some of the charities. And that's it. So we have a wonderful guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself? I would. My name is uh, William Knauer. I go by William on the dust jacket, but you can think of me and call me Bill, and I wish you would. I am uh, the author of Fearless Writing, just released in May from Writer's Digest Books. Fearless Writing, How to Create Boldly and Write with Confidence is the full title. I'm also the author of Write Within Yourself, an author's companion. I'm the editor-in-chief of Author Magazine. And I have uh, been a uh, featured blogger on the Huffington Post's book section. And I'm here jealous. to talk with these lovely ladies about anything they want to talk about. Anything. I'm jealous. Can You're we talk jealous? About that? I'm jealous that you got to write for the Huffington Post. Well, it was fun. It was fun. I'm not doing it right now. I took a break from it uh, because I wanted freedom to write about whatever I wanted to. And I didn't feel I was able to do that there. So I write for... I've written for the New York Times and for my magazine and, uh, well, and then my books, of course. Of my course. Books. Okay, so y'all, I forgot to say it. Let's take a moment and rejoice. Winona and Jade have their first byline in Choices Magazine. This is exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, that's right. <gasps> it was so exciting. Check it out. Choices Magazine, Judy Boyo. What's it called? Hey, Choices Mike, Magazine? That's us. That's us. I'm sorry. Congratulations. Is that cool? What was the magazine? Choices. Choices. H O I C E S. Yes, yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Age 19. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Fabulous. She is really like super hyped, but I'm remembering that you are here to hype your stuff, not us here to hype ourselves. I forgot I'm here to answer I questions. I, I'm here to talk about what you listen. One of the things I do is I interview people. I've interviewed a lot of people, a lot of authors, people like Amy Tan and Andre Debuse and Nora Ephron while she was still tromping around this planet. And I've learned when I interview people, I talk about what I'm interested in. So you got to ask me what you're interested in. Let's just follow it that way. Oh, okay. So okay. How did you go from noveling to being a novelist to a journalist? 
A jur- well, I don't actually think of myself as a journalist. I started author magazine because I wanted to support writers. And the thing I thought was the thing writers need is I want them to see the authors physically in person and hear them talk about their journey and the things they go through. And because I knew that a lot of newer writers probably didn't believe that experienced writers had the same self-doubt, the same fears, the same concerns that people who are just starting out had. And I thought it'd be very important for everyone to understand that, that, is a, that, that everyone faces these challenges. It's the question how you deal with them on a regular basis. Also, I believe sincerely that what it takes to write the book you want to write is what it takes to lead the life you want to lead. And so if you want to learn how to write a book, it can teach you how to lead the life you want to lead. So I was interested in talking to writers, not just about how to write books, but how to make a choice and create something on purpose, just like you two have done with yourselves. And so I'm always inspired by it. And I thought, let other people inspire the world. So I don't really think of myself as a journalist. I think of myself as a, well, just a creative person who happens to be creating an online magazine. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, I was going to say you're a thought leader. Yeah. I was going to say you're the cook. A thought leader, did you say? I like that. Yes. A thought leader it is. High five on that one. (laughs) I'll take it. (laughs) Honestly, like people ask us all the time, how did you go from you know, and I thought divorce was bad. Again, I'm talking to myself, but to um, a reality, a, a, de- a docu series television show. And I'm like, I knew where I wanted to take this project and I knew where I wanted to take this book. So you, just like you would do with your characters, you live your life on purpose, just the way you would write your characters on purpose. You put them in. That's right. That's but, right. She but, really does. She really does. But I should probably ask you a question and stop being narcissistic because I am the narcissist. <laughs> oh, really <laughs> is. Is there a common thread, like one really big thing that every author that you have interviewed has sat down? That's part one. And part two, how many authors have you interviewed over your magazine running time? Oh, number I can't. It's probably five or six hundred. I don't know. Because I do the video interviews for author. They're all on YouTube if you want to check them out. They're on authormagazine.org, which is a free magazine. So anyone can watch it or go there, but uh, they're also on YouTube. But I also every week do something called Author to Author on Blog Talk Radio, which is like a kind of a live podcast. And I do one a week and I've been doing that for five or six years. So I've I just hundreds of them. So too many to count. Uh, but the one thread is this. Every writer I know who's thriving, who's having a successful career, writes the book they love to write, the book they wish they could read. They don't write there's very few writers I know, I mean, like 5% who write with the market in mind. The rest of them write the thing they most are interested in writing, the thing they wish they could read, the thing that interests them most, and that is their guiding principle. And it's not so easy to do, ladies, because sometimes sometimes you have to write something and you don't see it being published. And it's easy to believe, well, if it's not being published, maybe nobody wants it. But if you want it and you can see value in it, then in all likelihood, there's other people out there who would see value in it too. I'm gonna go that back. That is say, the main thing. I'm gonna go back and say that I agree with you once again. 110 percent. Oh, excellent. I, 110. I mean, Melona did not want to write a book of poetry and and a short stories anthologies. She did not want to re- write an anthology. She's like, that stuff doesn't sell. I need to write stuff that sells. And I said, you need to write about it. You need to write. You, this is what you're good at. This is what you want to read. And so she did. She wrote, we wrote these books together. And then, awesome. bam, here we are. Here you are, you see? Back just do what form. interests you most. Yeah. Um, and the, oh, I just wanted to also say, I think your statistics are a little off because it's five to 602. Because, you know, you have to interview us for the magazine. And That's right. Okay. Right. The did you just say <laughs> it too? Oh, well, no, no. I warned you I was That's good. Honest. Self-marketing is very important. self <laughs> She's a mess. And I'm so sorry. She's a mess. So anyway, no, the other one was, what is that one big chunk thing that, you know, almost every author you sat down with was like, yeah, this is what I've experienced, or this is how I write an effective book. Oh, how I write an effective book. Well, well, there's a million ways to do it. You know, some writers write every morning, some write at night, some write whenever they can, some write, some outline, some do not. I think that one of the things every writer has to learn is not just how to write a book, but how to write their book. What kind of book do you like to write and how do you write? I've got a lot of stories of people who thought I've got to be able to outline to write a book. I've heard that's what a writer is supposed to do and they try to do it and they can't. And then they finally stop outlining and then they write their book. And other writers who tried doing it by what they call the seat of their pants 
and they couldn't. And then they outlined and they felt free. So you got to, there is no one right way to do it. You got to write the book in the way that you want to write it. And there's a lot of ways to do it. But I think the one, again, overriding um, element that they all have is they're writing the book that they are most interested in writing, whatever that is. You know, I would say for myself, I learned that because I, I started out as a fiction writer because I came from an entertainment, entertainment background. I did theater, uh, I did screenplays. I thought I was really an entertainer in the broadest sense. But I have moved to nonfiction now, personal essays, Fearless Writing is a nonfiction book, and I'm much happier there. It's a subtle shift, but I was trying to do what I thought I sort of should, should do, and when I finally did what I most wanted to do, that's when I started having success. And so even though they're very close, they dealt with the same themes, I wasn't really checking in with myself to see if this was the book I most wanted to write. And once I did that, that's when things started happening for me. So I know from my own personal experience, it's not enough just to be a good writer because I was a skilled writer. I knew how to write, but I wasn't writing the stuff I most wanted to write in the way I most wanted to write it. When I made that shift, that's when the success happened. Jane, you have a question? How would you, of course I have a question. How would you tell people to check in with themselves? How would I tell people to check in with themselves? Yes. What do you mean by check in with yourself? Give you me an example. You, you, you didn't check in with yourself. Oh, 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 good. Oh, I see. Oh, good question. Uh, the question I didn't ask myself was this. I said, uh, well, I eventually did, but I had not asked myself, what would you write, Bill, if it didn't matter if it got published? What would you write just as a gift you could give to somebody? As soon as I asked that question, I had my answer. But I, never, I spent 20 years not asking that question. What would you write if it didn't matter if, if it got published? Just because it would be fun to write. And it's a very important question. If you don't have an answer to that, then you need to begin experimenting until you find the answer to that. You've got to have something you want to write. I call it, you've got to have unconditional love for your story. You have to love it unconditionally, meaning you love it just because you love it. Not because someone else loves it, not because your friend loves it, not because it's going to sell or win you an award. Blah. You have to love it because you love it the way you love your kids, the way you love your best friend. You've got to love it just because you love it. And I wasn't doing that. I was trying to write for success and it wasn't happening, you know, at all. It's when I stopped writing for success that I started having it. 110% again. Yes. Again. Agreement. again. Oh, we're in agreement. I love it. My favorite, my, the favorite thing that I write is a genre book that up until now, I've never really read one that's like it. And I always thought it would have success. But it's a genre book, you said? It's a genre book, yeah. And which, which is it? Which genre is it? It's a suspense thriller. Excellent. And I always thought it would have success, but it's kind of like a suspense thriller with a Bond movie in it. <laughs> What's that? Is it with, with like a Bond movie in it. So like things happen that you know would be like, really? Impossible. You're pushing the boundaries of realism here. But, but, but like, what you do is though. Why not? That's right. Well, no, no. What you got to do is while you're writing it, if, if you think it's cool, I had this friend once who, I, he said, I got no ideas, I got no ideas. And I said, really? He said, well, I had this one idea, but this really smart friend of mine told me it was a stupid idea. And I said, well, what's the idea? He said, I don't wanna tell you it's stupid. I said, do you think it's stupid? He said, no. I said, well, tell me what the idea is. He said, Kung Fu Pirates. I wanna write about Kung Fu Pirates. And I said, why are they cool? He then proceeded to tell me why Kung Fu Pirates were so cool, up on the mass. Now, I don't think, I'm not personally interested in Kung Fu Pirates, but he was, but he had told himself they were no good. He shouldn't write about it because his best friend who supposedly was smart told him it was a bad idea. If you think sus uh, suspense, Bond style with crazy villains and giant tech is cool to you, then you got to tap into what's cool about it and let that coolness be what helps you tell the story. If you think so, you're not the only one. You're not I think it's, a, I think it's amazing. I've written 26 of the novels, and yes. I just recently got picked up with a three since, book contract. Ever since we were Congrats. little kids, she's been writing with these people and reading me the stories, and I'm like, oh, this one uh, book coming up, she did something that I, I just was totally sad about. I was like, don't oh. do it! Oh, what? Do it! She's a good reader? Yeah, I'm her beta reader. I've been her beta Excellent. reader for as long as forever, like forever, I've been Excellent. a beta reader. Excellent. But anyway, once again, we're back on us, and we yes. can be back on so, you. Okay, yes. so out of everything that you've done, what is the thing that you've enjoyed the most? Uh, writing. Hard question. It's like <laughs> I mean, I, I do a lot of stuff. So I write, I interview people, I give tech lectures, and I teach workshops. 
and I love that stuff, but nothing replaces um, the practice of writing. It really taught me how to live, you know? It taught me how to, how to make choices. It taught me who I am. And so the daily practice of writing, the daily practice of it, which is sort of like getting into that flow state where you kind of lose track of time and you kind yeah. of sink into the dream of whatever you're writing about. Here's something interesting. I would get into that state of mind, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're writing fiction or nonfiction or poetry, you have to get in a state of mind. And I would feel as good as I can feel while I'm in that state of mind. Mm -hmm. I forget about myself, I forget about my little problems. Mm -hmm. And I just am focused on that story. And then I'd come out and I'd be feeling so good. And then I'd slowly, my mood would kind of level out. And I thought to myself, how come I'm not living every day the way I do when I'm writing? And that has become my new goal. To f I want to feel as good just putzing around the world buying groceries as I do when I'm deep in the, the storytelling. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I absolutely know. So how did you, how did you accomplish that? Well, it's a print of practice. I just, I said, you know, I did, I said to myself, I think I can feel this good all the time. But until you make that decision, how do you know to feel that good? You think, well, that's just what life's like. Life's tough. Things are tough. You don't know. It's hard. Blah, blah. I said, no. If I feel that good while I'm writing, why aren't I feeling that good when I'm not writing? And the reason is I would, I was judging the world as it wasn't, I, I was judging the world. It wasn't good enough. But when I'm writing, I don't judge anything. I just say, what is it I most want to say? What am I most interested in? Hmm. So I would go out in the world and I'd say, instead of judging the world and seeing it as right and wrong, accept it as it is and work creatively with it. Does that make sense? No, I was, I was about to just wrap that up in like one little sentence. If, if you don't mind, may I try? Please. Okay, so when you're a writer, you create a world, therefore you don't judge it because it's right. the one you want. That's right. When you, are, when you get out of there, you live in a world That's that right. has been created for you. It's not the one you want. But when you change your mindset and make the world, create that world to fit you, because you're the piece in this world That's that, right. that, can either, that can either change it to fit you or you're the piece that can fight against the flow. So right. once you decide to change it, to fit, make that world fit you, make this world fit you, you've created a world in what's now in reality that fits you and it's your mindset amen it's the same thing that you're writing on paper you're writing your mindset on the paper you're That's living right. your mindset in the world you're absolutely right well said write all I'm that a writer down. after all That's right. <laughs> <laughs> amen that is awesome well said well said all right well, you know, so we're so out of time, time. <laughs> so i guess the last question i have for you where can people find you and your books well, my books are wherever fine books are sold, bookstores, wherever you can get them. Uh, you can get the fearless writing. But to learn more about me, go to williamkenauer.com. Williamkenauer.com, just like my name is spelled. And you have links to Author Magazine, my blog, my books, my workshops. I teach, uh, I should say, I teach fearless writing workshops. I also work with people one-on-one, -on -one, like a sort of writing coach, a life coach for writers. I do that too. So if you're interested in any of that, go to williamkenauer.com and uh, check it out. Awesome. You know, so well, we said that together. That's yeah. You know, we do the same stuff. We just never tell people. I know. We do one on one writing and we do actual workshops and coaching. We never just tell people. people. Tell them. We have a whole page there on it. You we don't tell them. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, no, no. well but way to go for putting that in there. Yes. Okay. So, you guys, I'm Jade and I'm Winona of the And I Thought Ladies. And you can check out everything that we do and our books. Mine the And I Thought series on andwethought.com and Just Writing Life. Yeah, that, that's watch it. Us, wait, watch us uh, on Just, Just Writing, Writing Life. Life on Channel 18. If you can't, then catch the stream on, on Amazon. Amazon. So if you do that, Just Writing Life, start with episode two or three. Three, three's better. Two's good. But you know, we're getting, we had a learning curve on it. Yeah, huge. we did. We had a huge learning curve, but it is what it is. So just remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Winona and Jade. With the two broken nails. I know. Bye-bye.